Merry Christmas YouTubers! I suppose I enjoy this time of year as much as most folks, but I confess to some extra satisfaction in keeping old Christmas relics running. Here we have a set of lollipop lights we've used for longer than I can remember. But for the first time this year, they didn't light up. Not at all. Nothing. I couldn't stand to just pitch them. So I took them apart and learned a few things in the process. Um, it's not likely that you have these same lights, but uh, many of the design principles are similar among these lights, so hopefully you'll pick up something useful. Just a couple of screws open up the body of the enclosure, and unfortunately those screws are the easiest thing to remove in this process. I think these lights were made by Philips, and they did not want them to be repaired. Once the body is apart, you get to these insert molded components. Unfortunately, there's no easy way to crack open a part like this, so it's just a matter of cutting it up. But don't worry about it, since the alternative is just pitching the whole thing in the garbage, so what do you got to lose? The molding was thicker than I'd guessed, and I ended up taking it off in multiple passes. Uh, the key thing about this insert molding is that there's a container at the core that is covering the, covered by the molding. Thus, while I was sawing through the molding, I could hear when I'd hit that hard plastic container, and then I could rotate the saw around to move to make sure I'm just cutting through molding and not into the container. Obviously, I didn't want to cut through the container for fear I'd cut into the PCB inside. Once the molding was off, the container could be cut or pried open to re reveal the PCB. So since now I have the PCB exposed and I, there's some nice silk screen um, explanations on the board, these little uh, white labels that tell me what everything is, then I can apply power in various places and see, uh, for example, if the LED is working. Maybe the LED burned out. So this is a, an RGB, a red, green, blue LED. So it has all three colors in it. And so I, here I'm just probing it with about two and a half to three volts just to see if it works. And it seems to work fine. So if you want to know how uh, the wires work on these RGB LEDs, you can just Google uh, RGB LED data sheet and you'll get some hits. And there are really only just uh, a few varieties. Um, and what you'll find out is when I flip this PCB over, you'll see there's a label that shows which pin is which. So now we can turn our attention to these wires coming into the board and they're all labeled and so that's how I can know uh, where to apply power just to see if I can get the board to work again. Uh, the top one is labeled VCC so that's the positive power pin and then the next one down is DN, the data in, and then the next one down is VSS so that's the ground and then the bottom one you can barely see it but it's data out. So let's just take a moment to look at how this is wired up. So a lot of times with lights like this, there'll be a controller block, which is the power supply as well. Uh, and then that will feed into the string of LEDs. And here on the right side, you see those LEDs and they have four connections. Uh, I think I mentioned them before, the data in and the ground and the data out and then the power. Uh, one thing to note is that these are what you might call daisy chained as far as power goes. So for example, the ground of this LED is connected to the power of the previous LED. So they're in a series, kind of like flashlight batteries. And the data lines, of course, are also uh, daisy chained. So you'll see the data out of one goes into the data in of the next one. I'm not really sure that that's used much in this string of lights, but that's, I think that's a pretty typical way for these to work. Okay, with that as a background, then we can jump back into debug. I wasn't entirely sure of the operating voltage for this board, so I just tried a few voltages here. Uh, I also kind of half suspected that the power supply might be bad, so I couldn't really trust that. Uh, in the end, I ended up opening up another one of these and just trying out voltages, and the other one worked just fine, so I knew this board was bad. So I turned over that bad uh, PCB, and this is what I found, this, this chalky white su substance, which is usually an indicator that water got in there, and uh, then I, it's a matter of starting to look for damage. And you can't see it very well in this image, but one of the traces was basically just blown away. It was uh, almost entirely missing. I, I did go around and test the resistors and uh, the capacitors as best I could, uh, and there didn't appear to be any other shorts or bet problems, so I figured it was just this missing trace. So while I've got a good image here, I'll point out the, those white labels for the red, green, and blue for that RGB LED. So I cleaned up the board with a little isopropyl alcohol and then uh, replaced that missing trace with just a piece of wire and, and refloat some solder. So I tested things and they worked, so uh, it was time to put things back together, but 
I, I knew I couldn't remold this, so it was just a matter of trying to make the enclosure more watertight. So this area up here seemed like the place where water might get in. So I filled it up with caulk, and we'll see how that holds up. So the good news is that the lollipops are out for another Christmas, and hopefully I can keep them going. Um, I probably need to do a little bit more tuning up as I put them away for the year, but uh, at least for now, they're working fine. I hope this helps somebody. Bye-bye.